These are barracudas. One of the most popular dried fish sold in Japan is barracuda. They are only 30 centimeters or a foot long. But look at the teeth. They are predators. Beautiful eyes are a sign of freshness. Last time we grilled barracudas with salt. This time she'll try cooking them like this. I hope it goes well. Okay, let's go. Hi everyone. How's it going? First, she'll remove the scales and innards in the sink. Sorry for the angle. It's hard to see. The scales of small fish come off easily, so you can remove them by gently scraping them with a knife. There are lots of tiny scales on the white belly. It's full of scales, so she'll give it a quick wash. She'll cut off the heads and remove the innards now. Today's fish doesn't bleed much, unlike the bonito from the other day, so don't worry if you don't like blood. She cut each of the three in slightly different ways. The last one was the best, so we'll show you that one. Make a cut from the anus towards the chin. Stand the fish and cut the head behind the pectoral fins. Hold the head and pull out the innards. Scrape out the remaining innards. She missed one pectoral fin. Okay, that worked. Wash them under running water. She'll cut them into three pieces. One fillet, two fillet and the middle bones. Place the knife just above the vertebra and cut all the way to the tail. This is a common way to cut a long, thin fish. Make sure your knife is touching the vertebra. Beautiful. Turn over the fish. If the knife is too sharp, it might cut the vertebra and go under. Cinnapon's knife looks awful, but it gets the job done. We don't use the middle bones today. Slice off the ribs, or belly bones. When cutting the other side of the fillet, it's easier if you place the belly side facing you. At this time, cut off the remaining fins. It's not over yet. When you finish deboning the dorsal ribs, the preparation is done. The dorsal ribs are the bones that protrude from the vertebra at a right angle. Pressing both sides of the bone with two fingers will make it easier to pull it out.
They are often visible, but look for hidden bones by touching them with your fingers. Lightly sprinkle salt all over the fillet. Cut the perilla leaves to fit the width of the fillets. These are pickled plums called amebashi. Amebashi are very sour, but because they have antibacterial properties, they have long been used as an ingredient in onegiri rice balls and a lunch bento box. If you've ever been to a convenience store in Japan, you've probably seen them. You can mash it more to make a paste, but it's okay if some lumps remain. I just realized that the video of rolling fish is missing. I guess she forgot to hit the record button. So here is what she did. Apply plum paste on the fillet. Place the perilla leaves. Roll it up from the collar side to the tail. And secure it with a toothpick. Please don't use plastic ones as you will saute them. Spread some cooking oil and place the fish rolls on it. The heat is about medium low. Fish rolls are thick from bottom to top, so if you cook them over high heat, the bottom will burn first. I agree. Let's do that next time. That's it. Cover with a lid and let it steam fry. This will heat the top side as well. Here is before and after. Can you see that the fish meat has turned white? Flip them over and brown the side as well. Looks delicious already. Looks like she wants to brown the skin a little. She broke it. These cat's paw tongs are a little hard. Actually, this way of eating means eating the skin of the fish. The skin of fish is said to be rich in nutrients. After hearing this, you have no choice but to eat the skin, right? All you have to do is serve them on a plate. They are already seasoned, so you can eat them without any sauce or dipping sauce. Thank you everyone for watching. We hope to see you in the next video.